All right, in uh, three, two, two one. Don't wait till the night before Christmas to be good. And in three, <laughs> two, one. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to episode two of the 10th annual 12 Podcast of Christmas. As always, I'm one of your hosts, Francois Nation. I'm Andrew Sorsdahl. I am uh, Kareem Abdul Jabbar. <laughs> and we have a very special guest on a the podcast. Very. We looked back. Special guest. We looked back, and Thomas was actually the very first guest. That we ever had on the podcast. Did you watch any of the episode? Like, do you remember what we talked about at all? Very philosophical, mm. um, as tends to be the Probably case. Probably we with were Thomas. talking about uh, Israeli and Palestinian <laughs> conflict. No, nope, we're not going to talk about that today. <laughs> we're going to talk about something else. It's hot, it's hot in the news right now. <laughs> it is. Um, uh, sorry, I, we I'm didn't Thomas. say your full name. Yeah. Yes, I'm Thomas Renwick. Full it's a pleasure name. to be full here name. again. Middle name. Thank you for having me. Uh, full, we probably went over with the middle name. Was it middle name? Uh, Scott. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we probably went over. We probably went over this the last time you were on the podcast. But uh, Thomas is a very good friend of mine, a good friend of all of ours. I've known him since we were in grade six. I think is when we really started to to uh, get to each other in a in a big way. Um, yeah. Like they said, first guest ever on the podcast. Pretty exciting. Yes. So for this tenth annual edition, we figured. We got to bring back our very first guest. And also it's nice um, to have, like, I, I would say for myself, Thomas is like probably the person I know who is the most informed. Yeah. Mm. And uh, yeah. generally speaking, and very intellectual. And I love just having, I, I hate to say debates because I think we. Conversations. Well, a conversation. Yeah. I think yeah. we, like if we actually talk about like even things we've like not argued about, but like to head back and forth on. Mm. I think if one of us isn't playing like devil's advocate, we probably actually <laughs> agree on yeah. almost everything. Yeah. We, we just both appreciate the riposte. Well, yeah. this isn't uh, the agree podcast. This is the fight or die podcast. <laughs> they call it Saskatchewan's number one fight or die podcast. And today we're going to be discussing. number one. <laughs> um, no, Thomas, I just want to... I saw you, uh, we were shooting an episode as when you came in. Mm. Um, saw you peeking around, checking out the monitors and stuff. Yes. Um, production has probably changed a little bit oh, from yeah, the last time you were on here. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what you've seen from the evolution of the Prehistoric Podcast oh, being the first guest ever. I, I remember like we were squished on like uh, all together, perhaps. Maybe, maybe we had one extra a couch and we all had just one camera and now there's so many cameras pointed I don't know which one to look at Ours to is meet your eyes yours is the middle one camcorder, there camcorder the shitty yes. camcorder there perfect it's, uh, it's a huge step like the lighting too it, it looks good yeah I and remember, audio yeah we had like one camera two shotgun mics mm. um, way Shared. like I guess they were like down like I actually don't even know if we had like first episode we wouldn't have had like the boom down it would have been just like Oh. Mike's taped somewhere. May, yeah, like root or like like yeah, hanging yeah. from XLR cords, <laughs> like whatever. Like and man, it yeah. It, it is wild. I remember when we got these microphones, because it's like we use these uh they're yeah, like Andrew was saying, they're called boom mics and they're they're meant for uh production audio. So like when you're on set, it's like it's a way you can get like decent audio. Um, if you're inside and you really know what you're doing and everybody's you got a, you got a crew that's all being quiet and you're following all the rules, you can get good audio with boom mics, but you kind of got to know what you're doing. You got to get the mics as close to somebody else. Also, to your subject they as would possible. be doing a lot in post. Oh yeah, definitely. Oh yeah. It's like a lot, mm -hmm. but it's like you, you can get, if you, if you follow the rules, you can get pretty good, uh, audio with shotgun mics, but in a setting like this, where it's like, there's so much you got to be captured. That's on such a, such a, 
so much distance. Like you really well, and need bleed, these... and bleed is a big thing. You want to be able yeah. to hear my voice clearly. Yeah. When I'm talking Not or when yours we're back as and forth. Much. I mean, I think I think I probably have the nicest sounding voice of the four of us, but well, maybe not Thomas. Thomas has got a nice voice. But. Thank you. Wow. We will be postponing any future pizza parties until uh, the nope, subcommittee that can't. votes. That's, <laughs> that, that happens later. You're going back. You're you're going ahead in time right Bradford now. Bradford is supposed to be the narcissist. That was the craziest shit I ever fucking heard. Uh, I, I'm that trying was not. the wildest self fucking tire pump. I have ever seen. You let me expand. I have the uh, expand on that voice. further. Do we want to sit and have you ridicule the tone? I, have, I would love. Inflation? I have. I have I specifically. Love this is purely based on I've. What your sister and your mom say do not no, does not fucking yeah. no, count. Not at all. Not not counting them. Or your I've, girlfriend. You have <laughs> you have both said that I have a nice we sounding voice. Under to you. Oh. Okay. Okay. Fair <laughs> enough. You. you. So, so you're, so either you're liars, <laughs> or I, I have. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, that's fine. Well, if, let's you talk about trust, Andrew if you want to trust, if you want to trust with a couple of liars, you drove up here to talk about Andrew. <laughs> yes. Let's hear that salty, sexy voice. Let's hear the savory tones come out of that oh, gullet. Oh, Audible chocolate, like, I think they like to say. Not only did he put, because you and I, like, okay, Lamba said it, but he also threw Thomas <laughs> No, I did as not. If, I, as I if we corrected, said, as I corrected if we immediately. <laughs> I corrected immediately. <laughs> don't even, don't um, even go there. I, I do, uh, I do enjoy the, uh, Thomas is one for um, philosophical, political, and religious conversation. <laughs> Always. Um, yes. Which we were on a trip not that long ago. Mm. Um, we were working for the SAS colleges and we got into hours and hours and hours of in-depth conversation. Yeah, from A lot of, even like we got into like municipal political things mm -hmm. and, and things going on locally in the province. And I was telling Andrew on the way back, because we did it for like three, three hour days in a row. So it was a lot. Nice. And... I, I do, I, I, I crave that sort of conversation, Long but by form. the end of that trip, I was like, I'm ready to talk about. <laughs> not that. Not that. Yeah. Like, <laughs> did you guys see SpongeBob SquarePants? <laughs> Look at Ariana Grande's bot. Like, that's what I was ready to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I, I actually, when <laughs> Thomas is engaged in um, uh thoughtful conversation i actually like to be more on the sidelines i really yes. like to listen to andrew and francois or andrew and and thomas discuss things um he always goes quiet and just like hovers just to listen I just and i'm like, like what the fuck is he thinking about <laughs> i just i really like to sit and listen i don't know that uh frankly i'm just not well read enough i don't I used to take so much interest in reading about current events and politics and what's going happenings in the religious and philosophical world, and I just like don't have the fucking time for it anymore. Mm -hmm. So I don't feel equipped enough to deal with that from a genuine conversation point of view. So I really do enjoy just sitting and listening. And as we were setting up and getting everything ready, these two were engaged in, um, I would say, very interesting conversation <laughs> about the uh, conflict in the Middle East right now. Um, you, but Andrew, you don't want to get into that at all? I'm just not informed enough to really have uh, an intelligent position, I would oh, say. Yeah, I, um, man, can I say my position real quick? Of course. And then I, I think if you don't agree, then it's a little like, come on. There are people who are able to... Uh, enact change and there are people who have the power to do things and there are people who are that that particular scenario in my mind has s s crazy nuance there is so much nuance to be found in that particular issue and in a lot of issues but in that issue in particular there is a hundred years of history there are two very vibrant alive groups who are very passionate about it obviously uh, they both feel extraordinarily justified in their uh, in their uh, causes. Um, I think with that issue in particular, when it comes to people who are not involved in any way, shape, or form, it it's no bad thing. And I think with most issues, I fall in this way it, to admit that there is a level of nuance that you just can't necessarily get into. 
in this format. And it might just be better to be say like there are respected uh, experts in this field who will talk about it and you can find them out, you can seek them out and they will give it the nuance and the attention that it deserves. And they're not gonna say some dumb fucking thing that they heard on some fucking random thing that now they think is gospel because somebody they respect said it and now it's the thing. Like, nuance is, is sorely lack, lacking in today's world and, and the ability to say, I might just not know enough to give a great opinion on this. Um, and, that's, and that's fine. Um, and, and I think and to, to, along with that, there's room for like healthy, lively debate and talking and like discussion and stuff. But I think the problem with, with uh, an issue like this in particular, especially with something like this, it's like a recorded format, is you are not, you are never going to be able to convey the nuance that no. you are going to want to, you're going to need to with an issue like this in an hour. And so you're just going to end up saying something that you kind of get cut off in the middle of what you were going to, even if you have a very in-depth, even if you were the most fucking knowledgeable person ever, in an hour you're going to get cut Andrew off somewhere. Andrew might be, let's check in with him. Well, I, I don't He's know. got a beautiful voice. That's, that's, I, Sorry. I, I, I would say something like, like I agree with you uh, 100%, but I, I think it is important in a democracy to engage and be politically, have political consciousness, mm -hmm. right? And I, I think it's, uh, the expectation to know everything is is absurd. So we can make mistakes, like uh, politically or, or like morally, like uh, we're not all informed. We don't all have nuance and, and whatnot. Um, and there's always more to read, but it is important to engage uh, in those political uh, ideas. Um, I and, but, and also like just the fact that, I mean, the West doesn't have like a neutrality stance right now. We have taken sides and I mean, I, our government is supposed to represent our ideals and our ideas. If we're not talking about those things, how can we be sure that they are representing us morality uh, in terms of morality and, and vision of the future yeah but yeah. i i think it yeah exactly what you're right like we are just regular people i will say that i definitely know a hell of a lot more and i'm more informed than a lot of other mouthpieces you know maybe not about this particular incident but i mean like the history of the area and the region and the and the and the, those involved than a lot of people that would just start yapping off about this and that. <clears throat> I'm going to give my briefest understanding. Thomas, you can correct me when I'm wrong about what's happening. <laughs> well, we're, you so we're, you, we're going in. If you say... I, I just want a quick recap. Brief understanding of Israel and Palestine. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, we haven't said... No, no, this, we're about this Israel particular and, recent and, incident. And the Gaza war, yeah. Um, Palestinian war. Really from an... Israeli perspective, the idea is we need to uh, offense the best defense. We need to push these people out. They bombed us, and the other really simplifying this. And the other side is they have treated us like shit so long so that we will finally fire rockets so they have justification to come in here and rock our world. <laughs> really? Yeah. I mean, it, it's Zionism, like from the Israeli side, that the Israeli people deserve a homeland. Which is beautiful. Like, I think we all deserve a home. But, I mean, yeah. It's complicated. <laughs> it is. They really got rocked in Germany in the late 30s and the <laughs> yes. early 40s. Yeah. Well, and, and yeah, everywhere, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah. Yeah. The northern part of Japan and then a lot of the Jewish population definitely had some. No, but, I mean, they weren't welcome in the West either, right? No. Like, Definitely. And, I mean, and uh, you know, uh, Soviet Russia, they weren't really welcome either. So, yeah. I think, <laughs> the thing is, like, there's another conflict going on right now, uh, Russia and Ukraine, um, mm. which I think is a, it's it's quite a bit easier to, to fall on a certain side in, in that in that specific conflict or, mm. like, a little bit easier, like, if you're, like, or I would say, in my opinion, quite a bit easier but this, like, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is one where it seems like every time I try to do any sort of a deep dive and I, I try to get informed, m the ping-ponging I do in my own brain is like, oh, yeah, that's terrible. Oh, fuck, that's terrible. Oh, shit, that's terrible. And it's like, it's so 
constant. I think there, there's one, uh, there's a streamer, uh, uh, Andrew watches him too, but there's a streamer I really enjoy. And he, he kind of, th there's like a, a sentence that he said, which I think is interesting. I don't know if it's 100% true, but it's like, you can't, um, how important is the history to this conflict versus the, what is the actual situation currently that exists and the reality of what currently exists? And then how do we, like, bar all history, what is the reality that exists? And then what is, what would, if, if you were to just look at currently what is happening, well, currently, right this second, and then you were to take out a piece of loose leaf and say, how would I, how would I, how would I divvy Score up? this? Yeah, how would I divvy up this land? <clears throat> how would I settle this? What would you do? And uh, that's the thing, it's like, I, I get so... That's part of the ping. That's part of the ping pong. Is like, do I do I consider the history, and how far back do I consider the history, and how much do I? Why does the history even fucking matter? At the end of the day, it's a scenario where people are currently existing in this. They like these people are here. Uh, as much as we'd like to pretend like some of these people aren't here, these people are all here. We have to deal with what exists in front of us. So let's deal with what exists in front of us. I, I have an interesting. And, yeah, I, I have an interesting proposal. So when you do a structured debate, we have a be it resolved, and we have an affirmative and a negative. Now there's multiple ways in which you can debate, but that's basically the basis for all. So Thomas is somebody I think is educated and informed, and I think mostly in at least our part of the country, unless you have a specific tie to the Ukraine or Russia, most of our we have as a society, at least locally been very much on the side of Ukraine. Now, some of that comes down to a lot of Ukrainian ancestry and stuff here. If I was to enter with you in a formal debate... No, I, I'm not entering. You're just debating a person that's non-existent. I just want you to give me your opening statement, be it resolved that Russia is justified in the conflict in the Ukraine, and you have to take the affirmative, what would your statement be? Uh, I don't know. I, instead of like saying what my statement would be... I, Let's explore maybe some topics I could take, like some stances you could take to yeah. try and justify it. But uh, you know, I, I think uh, Ukraine in a defensive war against an imperialist expansionist state, I don't think you know Russia is justified. But I mean, if you had to, like <laughs> the strongest argument in my view, sorry to jump in, would be that so many of the people in especially the border regions regions of Ukraine and Russia and that border mm -hmm. so many of those people are ethnically russian and so russians expand russia's expansion into ukraine is justified because it's the will of a majority of those ethnic russian people at the border oh yeah and then and then, it's, and, then and then it's a discussion of where is the border where should the border be based on the makeup of the population. Lebensraum, living I, space for the German people. I, I would make a, a comment, though, like, I think we're thinking about states as uh, as we do right now, as nation states. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so, like, a state should be defined and its borders should be defined around people who unify around cultural, religious, language um, specifics, right? And uh, na which is derived from nationalism, right? And it's kind of... I don't know if that's necessarily the best way to organize the world. Like it causes a lot of wars and a lot of death. And it's also kind of just a narrative when you come down to it, like Bob the Canadian, right? Like Bob from Ontario, you can totally relate to him. He loves to go down and play some shinny on the weekend and uh, drink beer. And, you know, uh, he loves to, I don't know, cheer on the, Can the Canadians. Uh, when they're in town um, or, or whatnot. Like uh, this identity that you can kind of construct is is a construction. And I don't know if we should necessarily be uh, organizing our uh, politics around that. So like to your comment specifically, it's like you have a lot of Russians in Ukraine and many of them want to cede to Russia. Um, you know, it's the same kind of issue with uh, Czechoslovakia in in uh, the beginning of World War II. Yes. The, they stuck a lot of Germans in Czechoslovakia. 
and it gave Germany the justification to annex yeah, the country. Exactly, because a majority of the population is was artificially inflated to be German. Mm-hmm. Therefore, oh well, we might as well just they make want, it. But, yeah. but can we not maybe like create a system that doesn't necessarily reward a specific demographic? But Thomas, tell me why Russia's right. <laughs> I like they've claimed to the, the area. Like Ukraine's been fought over for ever, right? Like it was settled by the by the cons, right? The Golden Horde and whatnot. And, and it's been passed around and, and the Russians finally like, conquered it for so long, and, but it's still filled with like Ukrainian people with a specific language. It's, I don't know, like Do you uh, think it's that imperialism. The, you think that people in Quebec should be allowed to secede? Well, I, I think that's a really good a, example. Like, yeah, right? yeah. We have that's another, why I bring it up because it's... Cause, cause this, uh, do they have the specific, choice too? Sure. That specific example. But I love Quebec being part of Canada. A yeah, country within too. a country, they have but their own does courts. my love, should it override somebody's freedom of choice? Because you bring up the Czechoslovakia example, and that's a very constrained timeline. Mm-hmm. But let's say that Germany had been pumping people in there for 100 years. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, 100 years later, it has been Germany, basically. Like, yeah. all the people are Germany. Well, They've... My granddad's mm. German, my dad's German, my whatever. You can look we, at Northern uh, Northern Ireland, same as accent thing. Like that was a specific policy yeah, to move. Yeah, they they pushed <clears throat> English people into Northern Ireland, right? In order to colonize it. Yeah. And you know, a hundred, two hundred years later, it, it worked, right? Like Northern Ireland's like, we're not Irish. We're part of the UK, the UK and we're not going to fight and kill to stay that way. So, and that's so, the that's the the civil war for eighty years yeah. was was that result of that. So I think like history is important to see where are these people coming from, why are they politically but aligned. But obviously the there's a way. there there must be a point of like it's been so long. Like, and that's that's the argument I think with Israel Palestine is who are we to judge? Where when when does that when's that tipping point? Because obviously it exists. Yeah. Like yeah. obviously there is a time when People yeah. have been there for so long that everybody is going to be like, yeah, yeah, but it is that thing. Like that, yeah. that, that's what it is. Everyone there is that way. They don't but, identify yeah. with it. It's not, it's not like a, it's not like this, this, mm-hmm. like, let's, I don't know, a hundred years is probably a good yeah. time scale where it's like, let's say that it was even beyond that. Let's say it's 200 years. Like mm-hmm. it's beyond anyone's lifetime. Like no one even remembers when they settled mm-hmm. whatever. And that's the thing. Like I, because I, I brought up the ping ponging and it, it gets back to my head is like yeah. how I, I don't like selective going back in history, like picking an arbitrary, like, yeah, but they were here in 1645. It's like, yeah, but then there was this other group here in 1341 and then they killed all of them. So should we go find the, just try to find the descendants of the people who were here in 1341 and yeah. then give them reparation payments? Like, I don't know, maybe we should. Like, that's the thing when I think about like trying to find who was the settlers, like, oh, sh- do you want to, do that? Should we find the fucking set, like the original people who were there first and then try to get some bloodlines going here? Neanderthal. That's what I'm saying. It's like, should like we find yeah. people who have the most Neanderthal DNA and then give them reparations for the genocide that we... we like, the Homo sapiens. Yeah, the Homo sapiens yeah. rocked us. And I'm saying this kind of like uh, facetiously. I'm saying this kind of facetiously, <laughs> but, the, but the point stands is like, obviously there is some cutoff that all yes. of us... And it's and to a certain degree, it's arbitrary. To a certain degree, it, I would say it's one hundred percent arbitrary. Uh, it, it's based well, on can, again. You can make an argument about what is valid or not, or valuable yeah, or not. It, but yeah. like ultimately, it's we we are making a decision yeah. based on well, human whatever. human lifespans yeah. and like what we <clears throat> why why do we think a fifty year period of time is important versus a ten year period of time versus what it's because of our lifespans and it's it's well, rel- I, I, relative to our I, species. It, but kind, like kind of thinking on that same I was thinking about this the other night. I was thinking about this this world of how we have like these billionaire superstars now that we all are like, oh my God, nobody will ever forget who Jeff Bezos was. Like he's, he's got so much money and power and he started all this stuff for like Elon Musk and all these people. A thousand Mm -hmm. years, I think. Well, that's what I mean. Like nobody, I, you would be hard pressed to find a room of 10 modern, relatively educated people who Mm -hmm. really know who JD Rockefeller was. Mm -hmm. But a hundred years ago, it was like that nobody's ever going to forget who J.D. Rock... Nobody would know who Henry Ford was if the Ford Motor Company didn't still exist. Mm-hmm. Bit, bit, of a, bit of a pivot here. Well, not nobody, but not, you did disagree? not the general population. 
You think General Pop knows who J.D. Rockefeller is? They would know well, the no. name, maybe not who he is. But the money still is there. Like, who owns Amazon right now? Like, Jeff Bezos? Yes, but I'm sure there's Rockefeller money Oh, no, there. I'm just like, saying what's in the actual mind of, no, like, mm. the Walk people. up to a guy in the street and be like, hey, mm. Rockefeller, what do you think of Rockefeller? It's like, I don't fucking know who Rockefeller is. What are you talking about? I've got uh, an interesting maybe thing we could. Yeah. Go so if on I said, I think, I think you're you're overselling. If I say to you, people, if I say to you, people are a lot dumber. Than if that. I say to you, who's King Ramses the <laughs> second? Tell me what he did. It's like he like, was a you're rock You're not gonna star. have a great time trying to. Like, but that's pre pre capitalism. But, but, right. Well, so you think the capitalism like extends people's fictional life spans? Well, I think. It, yeah. Well, I guess you're talking about like saying. societal, you know, right? You're, you're talking about societal uh, awareness and, and, and pli- like not. And you're talking about stardom. You're you talking about stardom. That's why I, I, I'm, try, I'm the drawing the comparison and between the that yeah. and, and like the, yeah. when do these borders well, then you're matter? Just easier to, like yeah. Jeff Bezos, the family is going to be powerful forever. Forever, yeah. Like a bit, bit of a roundabout way to get here. Yeah. I, I, I want to save a little bit of this because maybe it's applicable. Right. <clears throat> I'm curious where we all stand. Is it possible to, and I guess we would have to define what ethical means, is it possible to ethically be a billionaire? Is being a billionaire in any way ethically defensible? Is there such thing as a safe, self-made person? That's, that's a great question. Because, um, I mean, that, that is... To, what, to what degree? I, I don't think so. I, yeah, I don't think you could ethically be... I don't think there's an ethical way to exist as a billionaire, no. Yeah. Yeah. What? Uh, Try to think. Okay. So you play Factorio, and then at a certain point, you're you're generating resources, and the numbers are fucking going crazy. Bah, 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 mm-hmm. bah. You got so much of everything, but you're obviously trying to make use of it as best you can. So what? What if your your counter is running at a billion technically, but that billion is like you're just mi- generating revenue so fast, and you're shooting the revenue out so fast that you maintain this like technically I'm a billionaire but I'm trying to shoot these billions out as fast as I can wouldn't that be like ethical mm-hmm. like you're, you're fucking trying to give to so many causes you're trying to bah, 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 but it's like you're, you're also mm-hmm. generating that revenue that quickly I just think wouldn't that be kind of ethical sorry to, I keep cutting you off Thomas no no no, no no I, I think inherently to generate the resources regardless of where they ultimately go you have to buy like definition almost you are exploiting so many people to generate that much so you mean become wealth? a billionaire not be a billionaire because you would become a billionaire unethically I and mean, you could be a billionaire ethically yeah, if you inherited a billion dollars you could be an ethical billionaire, an ethical billionaire. Mm. i don't know i would i would i would still, scenario you would, I would, so I would still argue no you're trying to get rid of no. your you would you'd have to be so so how do you if you inherit a billion dollars how do you become an ethical billionaire or how do you become ethical can you become mm. ethical or do you think that a person mm. that inherits a billion dollars can't be ethical okay if so they, you, if they you if don't they receive a billion dollars in asset you receive a billion dollars in cash if, yeah. if they immediately well, i mean that's easy you just if they immediately um but there's nothing unethical uh, about holding money i don't does dirty money like stop being dirty when it's passed to somebody else? Well, I don't think that person's to blame. I don't like the sins. But of the they're father, benefiting the from the it, fa- right? Yeah, like, but I, the sins of the father do not. I don't know. Extend to the son, like the son didn't do That's that. That's real shit. convenient for you, isn't it? <laughs> Me <laughs> personally? Yeah. I, I, yeah. No, yeah. but like if you're looking at like capital, like uh, you know, like someone steals something and I buy it from them, is it mine now? Or do does it still belong to the original person and who, here's another question. who owns it? To get back to my, how much time needs to elapse before it was so long ago that the wrong was done that who fucking cares? And then, all these that exist, there's a ton of people who have no. wealth that traces can tr- probably trace back hundreds most, of years. Most wealth. Well, whatever. <laughs> but it's like you can't, you don't know where this family even made their wealth necessarily, or it was so many hundreds of years ago that it's like whatever. It. Or and like, like oh, and okay, yeah, so like I own a restaurant, people come in and spend money all the time. There are people spending drug money in there, definitely for sure, or yeah. human trafficking money. I can't imagine where all that revenue's come from. Does that make it dirty money? Yeah, to what to what degree are you responsible for the money that comes through your business if you're unaware of the source of it, right? There's no way. We probably do $3 million a year in sales. There's no way we haven't seen human trafficking dollars. No. But I, I think then also it's, 
we're right now talking about the individual, right? And we also exist within a society that lets those things exist. So, uh, would you, as a it's business not owner, all the individual's responsibility. But would you, as a business owner, here's here, like turn down the money? No, well, a little bit. Should there be a regulatory body that comes out and says, this is what we estimate is the percentage of human trafficking money that makes its way into this size of restaurant. And then you, okay, it's it's 0.5%. Okay, we give 0.5% of our earnings to a human trafficking organization. It's like, because you're kind of, the, the what you stated was like, I know this happens, but I'm being kind of willfully ignorant about it. I'm going to take that oh, money yeah, anyways. Sure. But I'm sure somebody could do the math and crunch the numbers to be like, you would be safe in assuming that this much money is like in terms of like if we share it all, we average it out. So if you give this much, at least you can say that I am doing my bit to not I mean, take like, part. The hose would have to close because I'm sure most of the money comes from drugs and human trafficking. Human trafficking. I would, it would be quite a bit smaller. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like there are ways to, <laughs> even though there are certain facts of life, like you, you just stated, that it's like, oh, well, I don't, I didn't, I don't have anything like. But if you wanted to, yeah, you yeah. could figure out or whatever. You could do that bit of work and then give that bit of money if you wanted that. If, if that's something that ethically but does that in your clear, head. Does that clear it, Thomas? Does that clear the conscience of the... Better not do it. I, say that. I don't know. I, I still think like... No, I, I don't think so. It's still, it's still existing, right? And, and morally, I think that's wrong. Whatever so, the bad things. So should I be asking patrons that come in like... What is your source no, of revenue? No, no, no. And I think that's above, like, over and above an expectation of an individual for so, a social problem. Wait, okay. wait. So, like, but you're, you not, you're not saying he's morally wrong. You're saying that social, like, it, societal. It, it itself is wrong. The fact that we live in a society where people are able to profit off of human, human trafficking and spend their money at restaurants or stores or whatever. The problem isn't the store owner ethically or legally taking the money from that trafficker. Yeah. The problem is that someone is able to profit in that way in our society. Yeah. But is, and, but is, and we all have a responsibility in that we are part of the society yeah. that allows that to happen. That's what I'm but, saying. But, and it, but, but that is collective responsibility versus individual responsibility for accepting that money, for example. But that's what I'm saying is like, yeah, it's collective responsibility, but it's like, do you still get to just be like, ah, oh, I'm just going to ignore it? Like, it, that doesn't seem ethical we to me. All like, if, you, if you know there's a problem. After listening to this podcast, everybody go out. A collective is just and you're gonna find one human. <laughs> but you're going to find one human trafficker tonight, and you're going to stop them. them. And if we all stop one human trafficker... Mm -hmm. Well, like, they'll all be dead. For, for, <laughs> they'll well, all be but, dead. But, but, like, there can't be more no, human no, traffickers. Kidding, kidding. There can't so, be more human traffickers than there are people. People mm. than not human traffickers. <laughs> we Sim can't mostly be human traffickers. <laughs> that doesn't seem to make sense. Sim I, simple answer though. Like, yeah. we all know that homelessness is a problem. Yeah. Are we? Are, are you then there, therefore morally obligated to house a homeless individual because you know homelessness is a problem? Like you have a home, you probably mm -hmm. have room for someone to live for a while. Like, maybe, may, may, but that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, is, is, Are, that, is that the question? Is it like, is it your responsibility to is, house that person, or is it your responsibility to vote and give money and collectively work towards like a do society? all the easy stuff? Well, <laughs> that's the thing. Is like how that's the question. How much when we're addressing societal problems? Because it goes back to go back to the restaurant thing. It, it's like that. The, what the current modus operandi is what is acceptable obviously because that we all we're also going to visit the restaurant we're also going to do whatever it doesn't the restaurant's going to go off without a hitch because like it doesn't seem to like economically be suffering even though there is this fact that the the restaurant is taking in human trafficking the vast money majority of the, money the vast majority <laughs> of the money is taking in this human trafficking money even though they could Figure out what this figure is, or at least a, a an approximation of what this figure could be, mm -hmm. and then they could give this money to an organization that tries to combat the exact issue of that thing. And like, I, I think as long as it's not like, hey, now we can't afford to pay our employees. As long as it's not getting to that level. As long as it's like, no, we're still doing fine. We're making a healthy profit, and we're able to do this. Like, I'm that's saying I'm not trying to be this unreasonable. Like, you have to give all your money away, but. If there is this ground that can exist where you're making a healthy profit, you're paying all your employees, and you can 
try to curtail this human trafficking issue and you're not doing that, are you uh I think it's I think it's a bit doing of doing something unethical. I think it's a bit of a fantasy to assume that it's easy to calculate reasonably how much money is from even crime because like if we knew reasonably and within the the realm of feeling comfortable imposing some type of regulation on it if we knew oh reasonably this much money is coming from crime why are there like people wouldn't be free enough to if we know that oh like if, if we knew with beyond a shadow of a doubt that x amount of crime was happening you have to kind of know roughly who's committing the crime sort of I mean, I guess you could argue there's like projections you could make based on, I don't know. I guess my point is, um, should inaccuracy be an excuse to not do anything? Yeah. Yeah. Well, well it's, not, it's not even just inaccuracy. It's like, how much does practicality play into morality, if at all? Well, that's the thing. My, my point is about like, it seems like our line for what is practical probably is too high. Because if we if we all went out and housed the homeless person, there would just be no homeless people. Because there are more home oh, people than homeless people. Hands down. And then it's like you could create a system uh, where it's like you Oh uh, yeah, there must be. You only you could easily create a system not at, easily. At least in North America. Give, it's, 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 but it's also partly a give a man a fish thing. Like it's not the problem with hunger at, uh, like starvation and homelessness isn't just oh there are people who are homeless. Let them live in your home. It's what are the things that are causing homelessness and how do we... No, we all just suck it up and just that. home them no matter what. Like oh, yeah, every exactly. morning they take a baseball bat to your microwave, but you right. still... No, 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 no. I don't think so. <laughs> no, I think like you restructure society so yeah. that it's like there's a room. In, in essence, every everybody who buys a house has to buy a house that has an extra room. For a homeless person. For, yeah, that would, and it's be, like, that would be more akin. You you have to have a room because you're you're paying for the heating, you're paying for the whatever. So you have to have this house. Then, just like our jury selection process, or the I'm not sure how it works in Canada, but in the United States, you get a letter in the mail yeah, or whatever. Same thing. So you get a letter in the mail that says like this from month this to this, you will have to house this homeless person. You're a family of how many? What is your income? If your income is this much, it means you have to house one homeless person. If your income is this much, it means you have to house two homeless people. If it's whatever. <laughs> But that's and, taxes. Huh? That's hypothetically taxes. In, income tax, people? right? Like the redistribution of, of income. You know, you have a graduation tax system, so you have people paying so much based on how much they earn. Yes. And it's redistributed ideally But I'm saying to this is more like practical. Poverty and getting no people things. off of the street. Like yeah. our goal as a society, uh, let's say in this fictional society, is there will be not a single person unless they... We just unless, give a tax credit for uh, homeless, homeless people. Yeah. Universal they, basic income. Unless they say... <laughs> yeah, UBI. Yeah, UBI. Yeah. Unless they say, I want to be on the street, unless a guy says that and writes, signs a paper and says like, nope, I like fucking sleep on the bench, don't fuck with me. No person can sleep out no person can sleep out fucking side side on the bench no i like sleeping outside fuck you, fuck you. <laughs> i saw a video of a homeless guy the other day that's like fuck you i like being out here don't fuck with me i don't want any of your <clears> shit <throat> don't, don't piss, piss ain't off. nobody gonna um, tell me that's what I'm, I, I'm not saying that like i'm i'm just to pr i think to pretend like we as a society have peaked in our ethical like yeah. like what we what we all do ethically because the thing is we said as a collective a collective is just a bunch of individuals. Like that's what it is. At the end of the day, it's it's people. It's not like a collective is not an amorphous blob of nothing. It's all individuals. So it's like to pretend like as a collective, we have peaked in what we are able to do responsibly. Probably isn't true. So it's like the discussion is yeah. It's like okay, more like being more outright about what are the issues, like what like what are like. It's fun to come up with these crazy solutions mm -hmm. to these really big problems that you know will never get passed because because it's not it's it's just not remotely practical and, and you'll never get well thing, I but. I don't even think it's practicality I think it's like it's got to do well I guess it depends on what you mean by practicality I think it's got more to do with like there's a whole bunch of people who don't give a fuck about practicality and don't don't I don't want a homeless person in my house <laughs> I don't fucking care that people are gonna die I, I want I'm a fine burger. I'm well, fine with people fucking yeah. dying in the street in the cold I don't want a homeless person in my house I, I think by and large we on whatever side of the aisle you fall politically, we all care about the same things and want similar outcomes. 
thing we disagree on is the out, how to get there. Like, for example, with homelessness or like poverty, the liberal prescription for that problem is going to be vastly different from the conservative prescription. And it's not that we disagree that the outcome should be fewer people living in poverty. It's that the liberal thinks we need social assistance, we need programming, we need government solutions to this problem, and that's how we end poverty. And the conservative is, well, actually we need stronger family values, we need uh, we need like chari charities, like non-government organizations, churches, whatever, uh, individual charity, and like pick yourself up by your bootstraps type mentality, and that's how we deal with poverty. And while very different prescriptions, Everyone cares about not seeing people suffer. It's just the prescription for the problem is vastly different. I, I think some of these conservatives aren't going to care too much if that guy's not willing to pick him up so, by himself by his bootstraps and let him <laughs> fucking die in the street, I think, is going to be the prescription for some of these people. One thing I, I think there is, like, the liberal and conservative within Canada are the same ideology, that there is a reason that they have the same end goal, like, in... And in my opinion, the same means to that same angle that it is a very, there's no difference within a Canadian context, the liberal and conservative, like they are the same ideology. They're both liberal, right? In, in that, but I, I, for sure. I, I, what about, I got a question. Like, do you think it's ethical to, uh, maintain uh, quality of life behind, uh, productivity? Uh, of an individual behind the productivity of an individual. I don't. Hard no. S sorry, Hard, cl no. clarify. Like, behind. So you're not. Like, like, somebody sits on their ass and does nothing door. all day. Should they? Do they deserve to die for it? Yeah. They, the the, the kind of like. Uh, do you get to live yeah. if you're unproductive? And or, I, you I know, personally have always felt that. Should you have a house if you're unproductive? You have a right to live. I think there are certain because that's that is what it I is currently certain, tied behind. I think there are certain basic rights that everybody should have and i think that this is again like i know there's certainly to a degree a myth of a meritocracy but if you're not willing to do anything beyond existing that's fine you should be able to exist but if someone else wants to do more and work harder to get more that should also be a thing oh yeah. what if there's a, so that, a millionaire that, that also didn't leave the house and do anything all day like can they be held to the same standard as someone who isn't a millionaire and doesn't do anything that contributes? Is that your question? Well, I mean, like, I mean, or like, if we're talking you, about work ethic and meritocracy, if you want, right, if you, like, if you, you can live wealth, off the interest pretty easy and not do anything. I like the idea of if, if you have wealth, you should have to prove your worth every fucking year that you have that wealth, and if mm. you can't prove your you prove your worth. You fucking lose that wealth. Yeah, and like I said, nice I'm yeah. still for. The, the, I'm still for you get to. Everybody gets a right to live in my in my perfect world. Like, there's not a single person who dies because of homelessness. Everyone will be fed. Everyone will have a fucking bed and a heated little, even if it's a fucking little shack. It's going to be heated. There's going to be food in there. Every fucking day, there's going to be food in there. If you don't eat the food and you die, that's on you, buddy. There's food in there. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that's my perfect world. And But I do like the idea of, like, the people who fucking, like, who, who, were, who fucking invested whatever, got a ton of cash when they hit whatever, 30, and then they just gave up and stopped fucking working the rest of their lives. It's like, no, son of a, you, nobody. You got to fucking, let, I, maybe mm -hmm. there's an age or someone that inherited that's reasonable. Or you can prove that it's like, I'm physically now unwell, like I can't do it anymore. That's fine. Like if you're physically, you can't do it, yeah. then we'll then we'll let you enjoy the fruits yeah, of your labor. a lot of millionaires in the US I think are inherited. Like, oh yeah, I mean, Cal but oh. you need to fucking show me that yeah. you can, that, that money, <laughs> at a certain, you at can a certain, earn that cash. At a certain level, I'm not sure which it is, isn't, doesn't like generational wealth a wealth like end after like three generations typically under a certain amount that. it usually does, a certain amount. it usually does get fairly dispersed like oh, a lot yeah. of like the billionaires from like the turn of the century billionaires are now their children are like they're well off but they're not rich because the kids it, and the grandkids it depends were if you're from europe they were trust fund kids yeah i mean like, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It, it, it ends up they didn't do nothing historically in europe like one heir is chosen amongst the children and they inherit the mass amounts of the money and it is their role to, you know, make everybody else in the family comfortable, but to concentrate the capital amongst one uh, uh, member and keep on passing that value down, 
Whereas, I mean, I think like in North America, it's a little bit more. Well, like that's what I was saying, like e Rockefellers, equity, for example, like uh, they equality. still wield a lot of power because there are many of them that are quite wealthy, mm. but they don't have that same concentration of wealth. Like there's no one individual Rockefeller that has nearly the same amount of power that uh, batteries right there. Okay. You, is there another battery? Yeah, that's right. But right, right on the thing there. I like it. You want to switch the camera before you? There you go. Um, anyway, I was just going to say that the, the concentration of wealth isn't the same. I, I agree. Like the old European wealth mentality is like, and they also have like land holdings and stuff where mm -hmm. that's not as big as it is. Like, I don't know. The, the, the richest families in America, they own a lot of land. Oh, well, they do, like, but it's not quite the same as it is in Europe, like holding land for like 400 years. Well, yeah, no, no, but I mean, like, I mean, Canada, how old is Canada? It's, it's young. Yeah. Well, right? Like, and America's young. Down. Yeah. I mean, less like, than 300 years. So, like, and it's also the that, feudal system. Having that same amount of, like, yeah. There you go. Perfect. A lot of the wealth that they have didn't even come, but came before a monetary system existed. Like, yeah. there's like old, old wealth in Europe. Ramsey's before the second. public before, company system, yeah. right? Like, yeah. Which is where a lot of the wealth is generated now. So I think that that's... It's either land or cattle before. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I think that that's... It's interesting. And, and like, all, obviously, with the, when you get to that level of wealth, and you're kind of going back to the ethical wealth and being a billionaire and whatever your portfolio is so vast and you would be invested in so many different things that there's no way that you have a pulse on what holdings you have are being mm. ethically ran at all. There's no way. No. Like, oh, no, yeah. Bill no, Gates yeah. would have money in places that he has no idea that he has money. Mm -hmm. Like he would have significant holdings in companies that he doesn't even know exist mm -hmm. because it, you just one person cannot at that, at maintain that, at that, that amount of No way that he knows money, what his portfolio yeah. is. Especially because like, Obviously, he's got a large portion of that uh, money in banks, in banks that he like. He's not like banks are gonna. What what is it called for the the, the diversification of portfolio? Like banks do it, but there's a like word mutual for it. funds and like. Yeah, like, there's another word that I'm thinking of. But anyways, that like, uh, banks like, will take your money and then they'll invest it. Funds, there's, yeah. there's lots of different ways to invest money. Hedge but, funds and yeah, like like banks will do. They'll diversify your portfolio. They'll do it for you. So they'll just like they'll have your money. They'll say, hey, we have these different levels of. Uh, Really to simplify, it's like there's different levels of risk factor packages we have here. Uh, how much money are you sort is very there, simplified, but how much money are you willing to lose? How much will you like? I don't, how rapidly do you want to gain money? Kate, okay, we're going to put your money in this package. It sounds like it's the right fit for you. You're not going to lose, you're not going to lose any money, you're gonna, but you're going to generate. Thomas, have you ever slowly. seen um, Bill Gates on the Ellen DeGeneres show? No, there's an amazing segment where she brings on like prices right style items yeah. and he tries to guess what stuff is worth yes like and a box of macaroni yeah, and cheese she's like when oh, was the yeah. last time you were in like a Walgreens like a, like a Walmart and he would say last week but really it was no no he's no, saying no. he's like 20 years probably yeah, yeah. exactly and yeah. she's like jug of milk and he's like 50, 18 dollars like, I have no idea like no idea. <laughs> it's like no box idea. of Kleenex he's like 8 dollars she's yeah. like no that's 40 cents <laughs> um, it's just funny to me that the things your day must be occupied with over a 20 year period where you become so out of touch, you don't know ballpark what general goods cost. I, I was thinking about something. The, yeah. the things you must be concentrating on in 20 years, you don't have any pulse on like a jug of milk is an $18. Well, those are trivial activities I think it right, makes to do. Perfect sense. Yeah. No, it's just crazy. That, like you can't, you are, you are so, so disconnected from yeah. it. Like, oh, yeah. You're so thing, fucking right? from it. I, I think Bill Gates isn't... I think it happens way more rapidly than Bill Gates. I, like, I've heard people who are, like, not millionaires, but they're making, like, good... Like, let's say just under a, a mil a year. Like, they're just... They, maybe they'll hit that mil point some point in their life. They... Even those people say some things that are, like, you are so disconnected from what the average <laughs> Blow Joe his struggles are and what he's whatever that it's like and that's things like and that's making let's say 900k a month yeah and bill gates or sorry 900k a year yeah, yeah. um bill gates is making nine is making way more than 900 every second a fucking yeah. yeah um but that's the thing is like yeah you're yeah i i've seen i've heard people i've seen people um in interviews and stuff like have that that fucking disconnect and they're not yeah. making a million. They're not millionaires. And it's like, all right, like wealth, I think very rapidly, the lifestyle that you, 
It, well, it's like it's like the. We well, just don't the, have to think about it. It's exactly. it's not it's not about lifestyle creep as much as it or like li lifestyle and it's just, the second that money is not an issue that you have to even think about on that level. Why would you care what the cost of a stick of butter or milk is if it's like yeah milk I, I when I need it I get it like I don't it doesn't matter how much it costs like it's a thing I have in my pantry uh, what in are my they, fridge uh, whatever I I listened to an interview recently and it was someone who was interviewing like mm, who she was seeing as very rich people and kind of like just asking them laughed. questions <laughs> those aren't rich people. <clears throat> and uh <laughs> come to my neck of the woods I'll show you what rich people <laughs> and it was interesting because like they were all portraying like some of these people made 80 grand up to it was like a million dollars a year and they all portrayed themselves as middle class and they were like just had no Yikes. Uh, the you know I, I think it's a common idea to actually frown upon people that are ultra rich because they don't necessarily contribute to society's idea they don't work anymore all, uh, and they just make other people do their work like shopping right so there's like such a disconnect from being a contributing member of society but they're not fucking they're aware of that coal, i'll tell you that much and they're aware of that and they portray themselves as as being they want to be relatable yeah relatable and they want to be middle class it's like no i'm middle class i make four hundred thousand dollars a year and my <laughs> my you know house is worth millions of dollars and whatever but and, and the other thing is like she was talking to one of the designers of their houses and they were saying like yeah we like to put items from ikea into all their houses because it makes them feel better about themselves <laughs> so they're not just fucking oh yeah like because <laughs> there's that idea that you know yeah, okay, maybe here, i shouldn't here, be this rich or can we can we pause for one second i just have to urinate quick yes I, i'm actually gonna keep going i, 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 <laughs> I, say, I uh, this is more just a, a question that i have for thomas <laughs> yes where we come from, yeah. I would say that yeah. by and large, there is an egregious concentration of wealth. Yeah, I wanted to bring this up earlier. I'm um, glad you are. And it's interesting to me because the people that we are around that have egregious concentrations of wealth. Wait, how specific are you talking about now? Are you talking about North America? Are you talking about like. No, no, I'm talking about farming rural, rural Saskatchewan. Farming. Oh, oh, man. Okay. We're talking very specific. The one percenters of Saskatchewan. But people gotcha. are still very in touch. Because they don't live that lifestyle no. at all. I, I, because you know, like, they have struggles. They have very real struggles. I, I farm in, in Treaty Four. I own lots of land. And, but I also work, when I'm working, I'm working 12 to 14 hours a day. And no one else is like, it's just like, I, so I think there's a difference between um, farming wealth. But and what, and what at what point? That? Yeah. And it's, I think it's again, like, are you working? Or are you sitting back and managing? True. Because we know lots of people that do don't need exit, to be working. Do you exit and sell all that value and then just sit back and retire? Like, but I still, think there's that there's a difference there of, like, There's still a number of who's people working. who could sit back and not sell and still live very comfortably who don't. Principle yeah. says continue to work. Yeah. But I think that is that is key to it, right? Like, this is are ethical, you working? This is ethical wealth. And who... Like, uh, you have wealth, but you're still fucking. You gotta hit the grindstone, baby. Yeah, you, it's like, I, like I was saying before, you do, but you don't have to. I, you do. Like I didn't. No, no, sorry. Work you are. A choice. Yeah. Sorry, it's what I said before. It's like, so many of these fucking millionaires, and then you got to prove your fucking value every year. And these farmers, they're gonna show the wealth, but they're gonna be like, yeah, buddy, but I'm fucking. Here's my time cheat. I'm hitting the grindstone. It's like, yeah, you get to keep your fucking wealth. Is guess what? You're fucking doing the work, not like whatever Joe Blow asshole who invested so, in some fucking thing. So why why is that the case, Thomas? What is the difference between the farmer millionaire and the I, portfolio millionaire? I had an accountant tell me once, a uh, professor accountant, and he said like uh, farmers are the one percenters in in Canada, yet they still drive minivans. <laughs> and I, I I think that is actually a nice clarification, like. The wealth is tied into the land and the land is worked, right? Whereas, where is the wealth coming from for other people, like the other billionaires? Like, they own a factory in a place and that place is defined by how low is the wage that they can offer to people. And they have no direct connection to it. No direct connection. And then how high can they sell something to uh, the, the customer, right? It is just... 
at both ends from the uh, supply of, of labor and the demand of, of money for the product is defined by exploitation and maximizing profit. And I think that is very different in agriculture and at least in our agriculture because there's like four workers on, on, on our farm and we're all working hard and it's not a relationship of exploitation. Uh, of course, like, you know, you have the, <laughs> where did the land come from conversation and, you know, the money that land is worth, right? I, I think that's. That's tough. Yeah, that's tough for tough. a lot of people. And let's yeah. get, let's get yeah, real tough. fucking real. Do you deserve the land that you were born onto? Or yeah. should there be an election every year? I, I, and it's like the guy who yeah. didn't get the land, does that guy get the land next year? Because that's what we need to start doing. All these fucking Because bullsh- we're part of the landed gentry. We all, are. All yeah. The, yeah, yeah, you're fucking, you are the monarchist, the monarchy fucking, you are. You yeah. literally are. You were born into your fucking, your well, fucking rich, yeah. richness. So let's fucking get like, rid of, d- let's get rid of the fucking monarchy. <laughs> the bourgeoisie. Let's fucking, all these fucking farming families, all these kids uh, who don't understand what was Christ. handed you to know, them on a silver fucking plate. Let us fucking, let's rise up, people of Saskatchewan, and then we will take over these family farms and these fucking monarchists, it, these kings and queens who don't understand and don't respect what they have. We will take them down. So, Thomas, if you think about it, it's really kind of interesting. So, I mean, your farm would be at least double the size of mine. But our families would still be within, well within the 0.1% of land ownership globally, not even close. Yeah. Like considering global, that globally our is workers huge. are huge. Like not even fucking close. Yeah, I, like, like we would be in the 0. 0.001. Yeah, like considering on a deed, like my name assigned. A number of oh, acres yeah. per person. Oh, yeah. Considering yeah. Oh, that there's whatever, oh, yeah. more than 50% of the population that doesn't own, own zero. Yeah. Yeah, probably like 70. Or 70% owns, or even, literally owns nothing. Probably yeah. 90%. <laughs> yeah. Globally, yeah, like 80, 90% easily. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Ten percent. There's only ten percent of people own. Well, ten percent probably own something. I guess non-farming families. I mean, you could say that. that then up. you start getting into like, I own a share in Coca-Cola, and Coca-Cola owns this plant, so technically I own like that. Mm-hmm. No, but like actually, you having your name on a fucking deed for a piece of land. Homeowner. And should that mean yeah. anything? Bourgeoisie. I ask. <laughs> yeah. I, ask. I think the big difference between far, like from my perspective, between like a farm, farm wealthy and. Portfolio wealthy, I guess, was a distinction. Mm-hmm. Is to a certain extent the value that the the number one liquid liquid assets versus the minivan. Yeah, and so so li- your liquid assets are minimal, but in terms of what your yeah. net value is, is high because of the land and equipment and whatever. But also, the land to a certain extent has value because of the knowledge and stewardship that your family has had over the years and does that land have the same value to someone who doesn't know what the fuck they're like just owning it doesn't you you need you need someone who's even if you don't own it you need someone who's running it who knows about farming knows about the land to a degree to make it profitable so it's not just like for example like commercial in a city commercial land in a city has value based just purely based on the location of it in the city in proximity to like foot traffic and whatever that has value because of where it is. And you don't have to necessarily even know how to run a good business or a business as well as other people to, to get value from that land. Mm -hmm. Whereas like farmland, you need to have some specialized knowledge and skills to get derive any value from that parcel of land. There's still a market. There's still farmers that are like, there's enough of a community that, Mm-hmm. They can extract Certainly. the value from it, right? Certainly. Uh, so it's still I land is valued by the market, and it's they value it a lot. I certainly. We I have a counter to this bourgeoisie, my fellow bourgeoisie. Um, <laughs> petty, here's what we do: we do, tra- we do transitional decades. We get ten years. I get to take over the Renwick farm, and they have to teach me. Over 10 years, they have to teach me how to take it over, and then I get all of it. But they have to teach me how to utilize it to its maximum potential, First, yes. and then we that we share it. That's how we do it, baby, in society from now on. No more of this monarchist bullshit. Fucking down, so, with, down with Versailles. Down with Louis XVI. Bring back the guillotine. I, I so say let them eat cake. To come, let back, them eat cake. to come back, come back and circle back to... Down with the- 
out. <laughs> to circle back to the, would you bring a homeless person in? This also is like, I, I, I take it back to like, the, them. I take it back to, there's an episode <laughs> of Family Guy these where, where um, Cragmire gets mad at Brian because Brian is always going on about this liberal agenda and helping all these people. He's like, I work at the fucking soup kitchen. Where the hell are you? And he does like, he does all these practical things to actually try and solve problems. Yeah. And Brian's like, fucking government, we need to help all these people out. And with the homeless thing, it's like, you need to ask yourself, do I prefer to have a bowl of popcorn on my couch by myself? Or do I actually care enough to bring a homeless person into my house? Or do I, or do, you, do I you care too much about doing? the creature comforts that and value that my land provides me? Or do I care more about Treaty 4? Because if I really cared, I could donate the land back. Actually, one of our former deans had family farmland and... There's no way he could donate it, but he put signage up all over it. It's like, this is Na First Nations land. We're not deriving any value from this. Feel free to use it. An indigenous person use this in any capacity of. The farm farmland's my aneroid. Hmm. And they don't have any farmers left in their family. They let the land go back to pasture. And it's like, use this land. Soren Osbakken. They had land on my aneroid. And it's like, it's, well, a, it's certainly, a I have cool to admit gesture. to myself, it's like, no, 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 I prefer to have money and creature comforts than well, I give a shit about giving your a land money back. where your fucking mouth is what it is. It's like, if you're going to be somebody who spouts off about progressive yeah, but, 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 but what, causes, but, but, like, but what actually drives more practical value, take our land, do whatever you want on it. And know, nobody does a, anything for in, a, in a space where no one can do anything or getting value from it and then donating a bunch of money to a cause. I think example. there's ways a guy can figure out how to use it practically in a way that's going to benefit the people that he wants to benefit. I think there's ways. Certainly. It's, not, it's, I, not, I, it's, it's a, a, cool, it's a it's lot a, fucking... It's a cool it's gesture. It's a lot more than somebody just being like, yeah, it's too bad that we can't no, do anything. No, I mean, that's certain. We can't do anything for these people. Let's, that let's be honest. Like, it's an interesting symbolic I like gesture. Having, I like having this house without a homeless person more than I care about a homeless person saying. dying on the street. And that actually goes back to your point. It was. It's mm. not even a question of... Because you said practicality. <laughs> it's not a question of practicality. What, how do we define like I, I have diesel, I, I have diesel trucks I could is. sit and idle them and they could live in there and they could live in this house True. and we've got lots of places to live <laughs> right, at the but, farm but, 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 but I guess this, this you comes probably to could, like financially that might yeah we, we could we could all might also you, like burn like, and eat, bankrupt eat, ourselves eat, eat, you and yeah exactly thing is that you don't, like, yeah just all, like live in an empty house with no furniture and just eat like nutrient paste <laughs> more or less and, and, keep yeah, and give people. all of our money to various causes it's like is that is it a reasonable expectation to have of someone? It's like, unless you're doing that, yep. you are morally corrupt. Exactly. Is it an and individual's problem? Because that, that's yeah. like, on the extremes, it's like there's the the mm. one extreme. Mm. which all, But it, it, that's the thing, is like we exist, but like to an extent, it's like kind of arbitrary. We have chosen, we currently live in a, the thing is like we live in the best system for all of our collective comforts right now, we do. We have all we have all unconsciously decided what we feel is the most comfortable for us, and we all currently live in that society. <laughs> and Whoa. we could all just collectively be like, "No, it's pretty good." <laughs> like, let's we let's just do this. We yeah, like we like the yeah we like the current amount of homeless people. That's fine. The amount of people that freeze to death every year, that's fine. Also, I don't uh, the want to give my life like, back to the Indian First Nations. No, that's, uh, that's fine. We're like fine with that. Um, uh, and this is majority rule, so fuck you. This is majority. I don't give a fuck about any you small... You don't matter. This is majority mm. rule. Uh, whatever. Whales are going to all be dead in 100 years. I'm fine with that. Are you fine with it? Yeah, okay. That's a yay. We're fine with that. We could... And that's true. That is what we're doing. So, the, but the the, I, the question is, is like, do we take that line that we have drawn that we currently exist on, and do we pull that line further back and make our lives more uncomfortable uh, for, for for to to pay dividends in some other way? And maybe like really, really, the best now. way to live is to be a bitchy liberal and <laughs> and 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 push your agenda on everybody. But then keep living under a conservative government that makes it easier to be white middle yes. class and a man. Yeah. And it's like, fuck them. And they're like, do you want more tax breaks? I'm like, yeah. no. What's only the... if you're going to force them on me. What's that? And then you just like, bitch and yeah. go and yeah. be like, I wish this was different. I wish this was fucking different. I guess that <gasps> speaks really loudly to the culture of, and where I think like, I, I knew we were going to eventually talk about wokeism and like, hyper progressive bullshit but i think it's it's really easy to do lip service to things and to your point about the soup kitchen it's like it's really easy to be like i wish i lived i wish i lived in a system that prioritized 
the well being per- the well being of every individual in our society, and then that's it. <laughs> and it's like, what are you actually meaningfully doing? Yeah. Given our current system, are you volunteering at the soup kitchen? Are you donating donating any type of money or do anything in reality to change things? Not even talking about what you could do with your vote. Yeah, that's aside from it. What are you actually meaningfully doing in our? Oh, you're just you're just talking. You're just talking. Not putting your fucking money where your mouth is. Yeah. And that's the easy way to do it, baby. It's like, keep letting the Tories cut us slack from being white and then bitch because they're in. Well, that's what I'm saying. With the other thing, it's like, how about we... J- it's pretty good. Are we doing pretty good? Are we the majority? Hell yeah. Let's let's figure out how we keep that going. The fucking... The, the status quo <laughs> Like, figure that out. Like, that's yeah. the thing. I don't know, man. I people don't like I, to admit I, that I, there may be. I no. I. I that's <laughs> the thing is, like, I think I'm oh, like what you just said. I'm. I largely. I. I. I feel the same way. I'm just like there's so much fucking. And it, actually, it's crazy because it kind of loops back to the Israel Palestine thing, where it's like I love how much people will spout off. I'm not going to say gar well, to an extent. Some people, some people, not, I'm not saying specifically, but it's like people will spout off, like, I think quite garbage, uninformed opinions and loud and a lot and often and have zero interest. And in if somebody, if it's like, maybe there's a different perspective, maybe you, like yeah, there's, well, a, there's increased an learning. Uh, you know what? That's an interesting point. Let's have a dialogue. No, you wanting to have a dialogue is fucking whatever. Uh, choose your trigger word. You, you, you telling me that you even want to have a dialogue, zero other anything, means that you are this. Uh, pick your fucking whatever the word yeah, is. On the, on racist. The one, you know what I mean? Any, any, of those, any of those racist fucking words. Nazi, whatever on the you're, one side. You're, you're, you're a snowflake. You're a this any or of those that words. on the other side. Your your desire to to want to even have a dialogue, mm-hmm. and it's like a little bit it feels like you're not putting your money where your mouth is because it seems like you really care about this thing and uh, you do, but if you care about this thing, you would think that you would want to learn about it, know about it, how to defend it better, how to support it better, any of that stuff. And it's like, if you're one of these people that is willing to fucking like be hypercritic, hypercritical about, if you're, I'll say this, if you're one of those fuckers who says, People who don't f- b- agree with this statement deserve to die. If you're going to make that statement, I'm going to expect a little bit more out of you in terms of oh, like, if, what is your, what are you contributing to the conversation? Because you are making a crazy, uh, what's the word, uh, prescription. Uh, and doing nothing. And doing nothing to, to f- so a little bit, I, uh, it, it, it's why it's a great example. Put your great, money where your mouth a is. A great is microcosm is like, as much as the information that Al Gore was giving was like good information, we should have listened. It's tough to listen to a guy who's like, climate change, worry about it, it's the next blah, 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 and then gets in his private jet and flies around the country. And you can't and like, do that. And you like, can't, you can't do you're that. You're flying in a private jet and you're, you're, traveling a bunch and you're contributing more you know what i mean the the hypocrisy of it is very it's very tough to be so righteous while also being so hypocritical because you would just present because in that in that specific example Mm -hmm. you could present al gore with like well do you do you know how much a private jet the what what that contributes to emissions either either answer is reprehensible because in one in one hand it's like oh no i don't know Oh, you it's like, know. oh, you don't know. You're, you're Weird, a tr- climate you're the guy. change guy. Yeah. And if you do know, it's like, oh, you, so you do know and you still choose to... Do it anyways. Do it anyways. Weird. Now, yeah. now, kind of hearkening back to that first episode um, with our first guest, I think we've probably talked over Thomas more than he would love <laughs> yeah. to speak. That's typical Thomas uh, so, conversations. He's too uh, nice. I've uh, said he's the world's greatest listener. I've said it many times. Fact. Many, many times. But he's also much smarter than and I'm a narcissistic all of loud you. Asshole, he's so also much smarter than all of you well. motherfuckers. <laughs> and we should all listen to him, but we don't. And this is what's wrong with society. So let's let Thomas, I don't know, close us out, if that's right. Are we getting near the I don't know. Who yeah, I'm actually... Hour 10. Y- you give us your final... You pick whatever thing out of the fucking dross and bullshit that was just <sighs> levied. And you give us... No time you, limit. If we, if we yeah, run yeah. for another hour, great. If well, we run... Well... Uh, 
Whatever. You fuck have, it. So it's the mm-hmm. 10th annual. Fuck well, no, it. But it's not. Alex, if you would like to leave, that's fine. <laughs> uh, no, he's forced. He's forced to stay. Yeah, okay. You had a date today? He did. He does. Oh, Another nice. alcoholic. Hey. Continue, sorry? <laughs> <laughs> you really attract a certain type. No, yes. I, I really, like I said earlier on, I really enjoy just talking and engaging politically with people in a long-form conversation. Uh, I think that's the most important aspect of it and, and listening to uh, people's views. Listening, that's the key. <laughs> well, yeah, because, I mean, I mean, that is, I think, the definition of democracy is sitting down and and having conversations about how we see the world and how we want to change it preferably preferably for the better uh so i always enjoy these conversations because we get to uh laugh and engage with serious conversations and uh, topics rather so and and drink beer as well or, or alcohol but yeah i so i think i enjoyed it and this is the 10th anniversary it's beautiful i think the show has progressed so much and i'm really happy that you guys brought me back on to <laughs> have more endless political conversations and philosophical uh but we touched on actually quite a few yes we did yeah, yeah it was good i like it it's constructive well, yeah it's nice i guess like I don't want to dive into a whole other thing necessarily, but like, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm really curious. Cause like we did just talk over you a ton. No, no, um, no. The thing is like, it's going to happen with Thomas. It's going to happen. It is, I don't but, want it to happen. None yeah. of us want it to happen because he's the fucking, I just said it and I'll say it again. He's the smartest motherfucker. <laughs> who's the most well thought out about any of these fucking issues no. because he doesn't feel the need to do what I'm doing right now mm. and fucking just spout his fucking mouth Grand off. Stand He's at soapbox. Yeah, <laughs> does, he doesn't feel the need. He doesn't get, and I, I've said this to everybody, everybody I talk to, whatever, whenever anybody tries to get me into a fucking political discussion and like in this age of my life, nearing 30, I'm like, I just don't really want to do it anymore because I don't, I get too emotionally invested. I get upset. I get fucking, I say something I didn't mean to say. Mm. And then it, I just feel like a piece of shit after because it's like, I don't want that person to think that I don't like them. I don't want that. That's not the point of what no. I was trying to say. You don't want them to know that you don't like them. <laughs> no, I, the thing is I just, I just, I don't really harbor that much distaste yeah. for other people. My, 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 my criticism is largely levied internally. It's not largely levied. I, I'm not like, you fucking idiot. That's not largely my way. But the mm. thing is like, you get into a discussion, you say something in a passionate bout of whatever and then somebody thinks that it's like, oh, you said that in malice, you said that in in hate, or you said that in in a, you th- you think I'm stupid. And it's like, no, 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 you you misunderstand, senor. I'm really stupid, and I'm really mean, and I I really I am the one who's got, uh, getting away from like leaving this conversation feeling like a fucking piece of shit. Like you're great, don't worry about it. I'm super glad that you even engaged with me. But it's like uh, with Thomas in particular. <laughs> Because of the way that you engage with human beings and with me and the patience you've shown me for many, 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 many years, it's like I, I've never, ever one time left a conversation with you feeling like a piece of shit. Mm, that's a good point. And it's nice. and it's and it's a rare quality. And the thing is, it's not about. Well, really it's partly that. about me because I need to. Obviously, you shouldn't. You got to get over yourself to an extent, but like, but it is, a, but it is, I think it speaks highly to you as an individual being like, you can engage with, I think, fucking anybody. And that person is not going to leave feeling like you, you, you tried to mischaracterize them. You didn't represent their uh, position properly. You didn't give them the space to speak or whatever. No one is going to leave a conversation with you feeling that way. Mm. And, uh, I feel like people leave conversations with me sometimes feeling that way. And I ne- and it's like, you'd never want people to feel that way. And they and, should. And they should. I, I feel like it's kind of close a little bit like wrapping up, I guess. It's a little wild to me thinking about, I know all of you pretty well. We've had lots of discussions about everything. Well, I know you everything. through our friend Bill. But um, you and I are friends. Yeah, yeah we're, we know each other. We're acquaintances. Friendly. But Friendly. Um, it's wild to me to think that we're all, I would say, very moderate, very, like, middle of the road versus staunchly left or staunchly right. We all kind of, nuance is a thing we've talked about a lot today, but we all kind of find ourselves 
I would say typically pretty in the middle, depending on, and then like very based on the issue, we're going to have nuance around our opinions. And it's wild to me to think that 10 years ago, <laughs> that wasn't the thing that would be really that controversial. Even mm. if people felt they were yeah. one way or the other, they would probably hear something like that and be like, oh yeah, yeah, like that, that's reasonable. And then now you have people saying things like, it's not the person on the left or the right that's the problem. It's those filthy fucking fed sitting Cent centrists. The They're the real problems. Pick a side, motherfucker. Yeah. And if you don't pick a side, you're part of the you're really part of the problem. You are the problem. You are the you're problem. Not part of the and problem. that just goes against my DNA. It does. And so it, viciously. And I think to, to your to your point, Fran, about how just generous in conversation Thomas is. Um it's just when you have someone who's willing to just listen, it allows you to just explore. Explore. Yeah. So it's, it's, that's what I, yeah. Of all the people here who deserve a podcast, it's not me. It's not Fran. It's not Brad. It's fucking Thomas. No. And we're, I'm just, yeah, I appreciate you. I appreciate you, you coming on and just, I'm sure we'll have much more just after the cameras cut. I'm yep. sure there's much more conversation of to be course. had, but, um, I don't think Epstein killed himself. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so much for tuning in to another episode of the First Time Podcast. Uh, we were honored to have our first and uh, hopefully, uh, God willing, not our last guest. I Any of us could be killed uh, <laughs> in a car accident. Or I wasn't joking about the bourgeois, the current monarchy that current ex currently exists in uh, Saskatchewan today. <laughs> there are people who inherited their wealth, inherited their land. Mm -hmm. Basically kings. I mean, what is define a king? They are basically <laughs> kings. Uh, we need to fucking take these people down. We need to be sharing this land. We need to be divvying it up. Uh, this is not an effective use of space. Uh, we have a, cr uh, a population <laughs> problem. Uh, I'm just saying, bourgeoisie, please stand with me. These are fucking monarchist scum. Uh, they both will defend Elizabeth II to their deaths. Uh, we will not stand for it. Let's see your it. birth certificate. <laughs> Let's see your birth certificate. Then we'll see who's Then we'll see who's, who we need to listen to. <laughs> I am from a moderate <laughs> South African country. Uh, thank very, you, as always, to our producer, Alex, about. for sitting through a couple of these again. Um, thank you, Alex. He's got a date with an alcoholic tonight, so that's awesome. Congratulations for that. And Thomas, any closing remarks? No. Thank you, guys. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers.